Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Sarah Fuller here with Easy Adapted PE. Today I'm gonna to go over something very simple, locomotor movements. The basic ones that we're gonna talk about are gallop, skip, hop, jump, leap, and sidestep. These are typically used when we are testing students um, using the TGMD2 or the TGMD3. You can find a lot of these in the bot tests as well. And they're the basic movements that kiddos need in order to excel in other activities that we are providing them. So I'm gonna show videos of myself doing the movements as well as speak to typical problems that I see with students with and without disabilities and how to correct those problems. On top of that, I'm gonna talk about the progressions. So how you can start from a simple hop and get all the way to a pattern hop. So with hopping, you really need to have balance first. The foot that you are standing on needs to be strong, you need to be standing upright, and the foot that you're not standing on, the one that is bent, the knee is typically at a 90 degree angle, and um, the knee is back. We don't want the knee forward. When the knee comes forward, it's not really a hop anymore. So the knee stays behind the hip. One of the problems I see is that their knee is not, is not high enough, there's no flight or there's no balance. So some of the ways I help my students to correct these issues is that I will have a, a chair or a cone or even the wall, something nearby that they can hold on to so that it will help them with their balance and help them gain more confidence. The other piece that I'll do is I will uh, kneel down next to them and hold the foot that is bent or the leg that is bent to help give them again that balance and that safety piece. And that really helps the student gain more trust and want to uh, create that flight for him or herself. Ways to advance the skill include hopping forward and back, side to side, or patterns, such as a one, two, three switch, or you could even go as far as to do hopscotch. Now moving on, when we're doing skipping, it's a step hop, step hop, step hop, and you're alternating feet. Your knee is coming up and then landing with that foot and then hopping with the other. So really, in order to help students, you know, I typically am seeing students not able to switch feet, so I'm not... I'm seeing them maybe able to hop on the one leg over and over again, which kind of turns into a gallop. Sometimes they don't have the balance. Sometimes they're just not understanding how it is they need to move their body. So it can look a little awkward at times. So some of the things I do to help my students is I tell them to listen to the sound. So again, this is going to occur when maybe there's not a lot of other kids around and you're able to have them kind of one-on-one, -on -one. but listening to the pattern of the sound of their foot hitting the floor is a really great trick because then they can kind of hear it and their body can start to mimic that. The other thing is knee up high to the sky. So I'll say, get your knee up all the way high to the sky. And by doing that, they're actually hopping on that one foot and then they'll have to drop the other leg that they just went really high up to the sky with. And then the other foot, we go knee up high up to the sky. And before you know it, that pattern begins to develop. The last thing I'll try to do is I'll have the students gallop and then switch. So I'll have them gallop, gallop, and then switch to the other foot and start to gallop, gallop, and then have them switch to the opposite foot. And as they're switching, that knee and that switch will start to occur and the skip will start to happen. The final thing I do with my kiddos is I will actually hold their hands, actually hold their hands and I will use the language step hop, step hop. They get to see my feet and then they also get to feel my rhythm. So as I'm skipping, they get to feel how I'm skipping and they will start to mimic that. I've seen lots of kids be very successful in this way. The progressions for skipping, you can do a high knee skip, you could do a fast forward skip, or a backward skip. If we move on to galloping, the typical problems I see with galloping is not using your arms, the back foot crossing the front foot, there's no flight phase, and it's non-rhythmic. We wanna point our body in the direction of travel. Hands up, and the thing I like to say is cat and mouse. The front foot is the cat, excuse me, the front foot is the mouse and the back foot is the cat. The cat wants to catch the mouse but never does. So we wanna make sure that back foot doesn't come in front of the front foot. So in order to develop this skill, we'll start sometimes with a slide and we'll tell our students, step together, step together, but now turn your shoulders forward. And that way they are now understanding that the back foot follows the front foot, but we have to keep our shoulders towards wherever the direction that we're going in. The other thing that I'll do is have them start with just walking. Step, touch, step, 
touch. So they're stepping with their front foot and the back foot is just, is just touching the heel of that front foot. Grass is you can have the left foot leading, switch to the right foot leading, gallop in a straight line, a curvy line, zigzag, around a rectangle. There's lots of different patterns you can do while galloping. Moving on to leaping. Leaping, you're taking off from one foot over an object and landing on the opposite foot. Some of the problems I see with this is no flight phase, leaping with one foot and landing with two feet, or they're not running towards the object that they're needing to leap over. Um, one of the things you can do is put down a jump rope. And the jump rope can go from narrow to wide so that the student can choose which end they want to leap over and as they progress, and as they progress, they can leap over the wider end. You can also start with a standing leap. You can switch your takeoff foot. To advance the skill, you want to add additional objects to leap over, such as cones or pillows. Switch feet each time that you leap, or you can move to a bounding movement, which means you're leaping over several, several objects, switching feet as you go. Sliding. When we're sliding, all of our body is in a line and moving in the same direction. Some of the problems I see is students crossing their feet, hips, to toes, and shoulders are open and looking more like a gallop rather than a slide. Sometimes I'll see the students able to do a good slide in one direction but have a difficult time in going the opposite direction. Some of the progressions I use is I'll use a line or a wall or a jump rope. So something that they're able to follow on the floor so that they're given that visual. I do step together, step together, and sometimes for students, I'll hold their hands. So that really helps keep their shoulders towards the line or the wall so that they're in the right direction and that the slide remains a slide and doesn't turn into a gallop. To advance the skill, you can do patterns such as four slides one way, three slides another way, slide, turn, slide, turn, and you can do pathways like a zigzag. The last one we're gonna talk about is jumping, so we flex our knees and our arms, we thrust up and forward, and we take off and land with two feet. Some of the problems I see is moving too quickly, not using their arms, feet not leaving the ground simultaneously, and not landing simultaneously. Some of the progressions that we have we're going to start with jumping up and down, using hand over hand perhaps. Um, we can move to a trampoline if there's a trampoline available, but definitely keeping that safety in mind. We're going to place a line or a jump rope on the ground and have the student jump forward over the rope. We're going to increase the distance that the student is able to be successful. In the advanced version, we're increasing the number of objects to jump over. We're jumping to the left, to the right, backwards, forwards, jumping further distances, jumping 180s circles, really anything you could think of that's going to make it fun for the student. So that's my overall progression of the different skills that I use, how I kind of talk about helping the students so that they are successful because once we meet those baseline goals and those baseline um, pieces, then they can really, you can add on to those and we can start working on different things and the students are going to be more successful and more excited to participate because they feel successful. P is really all about creating meaningful and successful opportunities for students. I hope this helped. If you liked it, subscribe and I will keep making more videos. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.